probably started hearing Beethoven at a very, very early age before I even remember many other things. My father was a pianist and he would play Beethoven pieces on the piano at home. My mother would play the Beethoven recordings on our record player. From early on, I, I always knew about Beethoven. I felt Beethoven and heard Beethoven. I still think he is the greatest composer that ever lived. To me, Beethoven was the most human composer. Um, Mozart, to me, is almost godlike because his music is perfect. It ties into itself with no friction. With Beethoven, I hear the stops and the starts and the fits and the, uh, the struggles that he had when he was writing it. And to me, that makes his music more human because it's not easy to write that stuff. Even if you look at the, the original scores that he wrote, the handwritten scores, you see where he gouged out, you know, huge sections that he wrote. Like he didn't want anybody to see the stupid stuff he wrote. Um, but it's fascinating because he struggled. He had to struggle. The man was deaf when he wrote a lot of this great music. I struggle with writing. Uh, my favorite part of writing is when I have written. This night, the song that I wrote, Part of it is Beethoven's Pathétique. He has such a soaring, melodic chorus, and it never got used for anything uh, lyrically. And I thought, well, this, is a, this would make a great song. So I gave him credit on the album. Uh, I, I couldn't pay him because he wasn't around. But uh, this, this melody... That's, that's a song right there, even without singers or without lyrics. It's a song. It's a beautiful melody. Once in a while, I, I start playing the Sixth Symphony just because I'm in that mood. The Sixth Symphony to me is like happy Beethoven. A lot of his symphonic work is very um, dark and moody and brooding and uh, malevolent. But the Sixth Symphony, I think he was, he must have been shacked up with somebody he really liked for a while. Um, the, uh, that's happy Beethoven. Well, I found out when I was in my 20s that uh, my father was living in, in Vienna. He and my mother had uh, broken up in the late 50s and he went back to Europe and I found out that he had married again and had another son who is my brother. So I had to go and uh, meet him. I said, I'm going to Vienna. I'm gonna meet my brother and, uh, and meet my father again. It was an interesting trip. Well, I was always fascinated with Vienna because it was the city of Beethoven. He lived and composed in so many places in that city. You can even see it in the architecture. You know, you, you look on some of the buildings and there's, there's a little angel playing a violin coming off the balcony of a, of, a, of a building. And you don't see that in other cities. The music is inherent in the architecture. That makes the city even more fascinating to me. When I wrote the Vienna, Vienna Waits For You, I meant that it's a place where you close the circle by going to Vienna suddenly things started to make sense in the world for me, uh, which is really what the song was about, was like, slow down, you know, look around you and have some gratitude for the good things in your life. That's what Vienna uh, represented to me. There's always uh, talent, there's always virtuosity, there's always genius, and it's there. It will occur in, in humankind, but it will take a place like Vienna to bring it out. That's the city, that's the place to become, you know, at the top of the line. You know, we have Nashville in America, that's Music City, USA, but in Europe, Music City is Vienna. Matter of fact, I went out uh, with some friends, with my brother's friends, crazy musicians, 
to some bar. Instead of jamming rock and roll or blues or jazz, they were jamming classical music. In the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, boom, a string ensemble brings their violins. Where do you see that? You see it in Vienna. That's where that kind of stuff goes on. It's fantastic. <laughs> 